So I was planning on recording this video about a week ago, and this video is going to be all about Lady Mikage. I have finally got all of the champions ready together to be able to fuse Lady Mikage. The clan versus clan is also on, so it's kind of like the best time to really pull it outside of a champion chase. And I'm ready to kind of like, I've, I've given up waiting now. I've been trying to find the opportune moment. And what I didn't realize when I started the video about a week and a half ago, when I was going to pull this during the Zinogre champion chase, is that you actually need to get these epic, uh, these legendary champions all the way up to level 60 fully ascended. And that's quite a big investment for, for Mikage. Now she's absolutely worth it, but you know, making a five-star epic is not a problem when making one five-star champion. When you have to make 10 five-star champions on top of taking this all the way up, these champions absolutely got barreled. Now, as you can see, I've already got a dupe Kira the Watcher. I don't have a duplicate Tatsu, so it's going to be a bit of a shame to lose the Tatsu, but I fused it so I can still pull another Tatsu, right? It's, it's just the way that it is. I do have a Lockwine already, and there's another Lockwine coming if you've got Prime Rewards, I think, next month. Um, and I'm also missing out on the Weragrin. Weragrin is still an epic I would really like to get my hands on. I've had to fuse two now. This is the second Weragrin we've had to fuse because we had to fuse it for a normal fusion. So Lady Mikage is the first mythical champion that I'm going to be getting on my account. Let's go and fuse it straight away. So let's see how much silver it's going to cost me. Fortunately, ever since the um, the hero's path for Alatrian, I'm sitting on a nice healthy chunk of silver so far. So I dread to think how much this is going to be. 2 million silver just to make a champion. 2 million. And keep in mind, it's already cost me, you know, a million or whatever it is for these two legendaries and 300,000. So this fusion alone is about 5 million silver, including all of the potions and everything to level them up all the energy. But she is absolutely worth it. Let's go. We're going to get substantial CVC points right now. Here we go. Lady Mikage, the first mythical champion on my account. The purple. Look how crazy that looks. Awesome. 60,000 tournament points. Absolutely crazy. Now, why is Lady Mikage so good? Well, what is really good about her is she is one of the best ally attacks in the in the game. You get increased attack, increased crit damage on all allies, and the buffs stay up for two turns. It is pretty, pretty strong, right? There's, I think, only Cardiel or Lonatharil is better. Longbeard, you could argue, is better because you get a flat 20% damage multiplier, but he doesn't buff. So you get, like, the Cardiel buffs here. It's really, really good. Then you get an A1 with a joint attack with a Shadowkin. So you can select another Shadowkin champion like Michinaki or Zinogre or Genzin or some of that nature, Harima. And you can make them always join her attacks with the A1, which is really nice. She places a shield buff that's really kind of pointless. And then we have the A2. Now, this A2 is crazy. I've had to explain this a few times to some people. I was like, ah, oh, well, it's just like Corvus. It's just like God's Secret Neri. It's more. When she attacks, she's going to attack all enemies on the three-turn cooldown. She's going to decrease the duration of all enemy buffs at the same time as increasing the duration of all enemy debuffs. So you get the buff reduction, the debuff extension. She's also going to decrease the cooldown of all ally debuffs, and then she's going to increase the duration of all ally buffs. So you're getting basically the decrease of the negative, the increase of the positive on the enemy and uh, your team. Now you might be wondering why is that so good? Well when you put it into Hydra this can double up as a torment solution because you will be able to reduce the fear duration so you'll be able to remove fear. So that is really really good. Um, not only that you're going to increase the duration of your increased attack buff from the A3, you're going to increase any increased speeds, shields, it will work on protected buffs excluding I think Lonatharil shield and bolster but it will work on every other type of protected buff. Um, it's kind of crazy. It'll help increase the duration of your decrease speeds. It's such a powerful ability. It's really, really crazy. You also get a passive here where if you designate someone in your team with the highest attack, well, they're going to get perma cleansed. So if they do have a fear after you've used this A2, well, you can get rid of that fear again. So it is going to mean that killing the Torment Head is much easier without having like a dedicated Shamael or a dedicated... Um, Duchess. We also get a very big AT Axie Aura. In the base form, she's a little bit less powerful for me. Um, she will control the waves a bit better here. So we have an AoE 100% um, increased accuracy for your team on a 4 turn cooldown. She's also going to remove all buffs from all enemies and place a weaken. You're also going to get an AoE stun for one turn and also decrease the turn meter of all enemies by 30%. Those are really nice controls. So if you want to use her outside of places like bosses and Hydra on wave control, she's really good. She can be like a sleep champion for Sand Devil if you need it. Really great option. And again, you carry the aura. Her base stats are pretty good. 105 speed. 
Um, and yeah, so she is very, very cool. She is a monster of a champion. So that is finished. The only downside is you still need to ascend her. And ascending this champion is expensive. Look at the cost here, right? So we start with three superiors. So we're going to have to basically go three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to be expensive to do this. So let's, let's ascend it. We absolutely must ascend this champion. It's really, really difficult. We're going to get the aura. You can see we're already at five. It is eaten into our potion stockpile. Six, seven. It's gonna, I, don't, I don't even have enough force potions. It's cost me over 28 force potions to do this. So we're obviously going to have to fuse some of these up. We'll get some five here. So just fusing this alone has ripped into my potions. It's really, really crazy. But again, it's CVC. You get a lot of points for this. Um, now, booking-wise... I really don't care about much apart from the A3. The damage is nice. Ignore resistance. It's really, really minor. It's only 20%. It's nice, but it's not the end of the world. Really what you're looking for here is you, you want the A3 um, more than anything else. You want the cooldowns. And I, I'm not planning on using her alternate form too much. So realistically, because mythical tomes are still quite rare, I just want it to land on this Imperial Decree. That's what all the only place I really want it because that turns it into a four-turn cooldown. So that's what we're going to try and do here right now. We didn't get it that time. That's a bit annoying. But we will get a lot of tournament points. Look, we get 500 for the champion training and 4,000 for CBC. So we try again. I'm doing it one by one because I just don't want to use these books unless I absolutely have to. Uh, okay, so we've missed that one. There we go. Three books. Not so bad. Not so bad. We've managed to do it in three books. You know, you could argue like, you know, 10% more damage is nice. I just don't think it's worth it considering how difficult it is to get mythical tomes at the moment. I'd rather hold on to them in case I pull a new mythical champion and it absolutely requires the cooldown. This is nice to have, but I plan on not using the alternate form all that much in most content. Her base form is what I want to use her for. Now, I am fortunate enough as well. I've got a soul to go along with it. So you can see I'm powering her up big time. She's now got a four-star soul as well. And actually putting a blessing on her is going to change because yesterday we got the news about the blessing changes. So realistically, we can pick any blessing we want now based on the effect that it's going to do. Uh, we could go for Brimstone because we're going to get stats on everything. The important thing to note here is Mythical Champions get a huge amount of stat bonuses. Look at this, 20 speed. We get an extra 5 accuracy here, 10 accuracy there, more than 2,000 on top of Legendary Champions. So really, you get so much more stats as a Mythical Champion on top of these things. So in terms of choices, what I want here, it could be anything. We could go Polymorph if we want, Life Harvest, Soul Reap, Temporal Chains. It's very difficult to know what I think is going to be. I think probably Temporal Chains could be very good. We decrease the enemy speed. We get accuracy. We're obviously going to get all stats eventually um, from, from the change, which is, I think, coming next week. So in the end, it's, it's okay to do it right now because I'm pretty sure I could change it and get a free change if I need to. Um, Lightning Cage could be interesting as well for some damage if you wanted to. Uh, Brimstone also for the A1 if you want to get that out more often. Let's see what we're going to go with here. So I'm going to start with Brimstone. I just think it's um, probably a bit bit of a sort of a generalistic kind of concept. Uh, the other one I would probably go for is like Temporal Chains, especially if I was using it in more wave-based content. Um, that would be where I would consider using it as well. But Brimstone is where I'm going to start with here. Uh, let's pick that in, get those stats. So we're going to basically get here. 60 accuracy and 8,000 health. It's uh, it's a little bit disgusting. So before you've even done anything to this champion, it's already four star. We've got the thing that we wanted booked and we're already getting like crazy amounts of stats from uh, these blessings here. So in terms of how this ignore resistance is going to work, it's basically going to reduce the enemy's resistance by 20%. So by, by the same factor, the amount of accuracy you would need is going to be reduced by 20% also. Now, if I want to use this in Hydra Nightmare, that's my first area that I'm thinking about using her, then I need about 410 when the Suffering Head is out to be able to land all of the different debuffs and effects. Now, she doesn't really land much other than this A2, but I absolutely still want this to happen. So we need to figure out how much accuracy we're going to need. Well, that is going to be 410, but we're going to be able to reduce that by 20%. So actually, all I need is about 328 accuracy. Now, if I use her aura, that will help as well. I could use that aura speed aura. It's totally up to there. Now, the team that I'm planning on putting her in, Let's have a look, see whether the aura is going to get used. So this is the team that I'm currently planning on using my Mikage in. And um, we can see we've got a speed aura. That is not going to do it. Uh, we've got a defense aura. These are only for dungeons. Attack aura, dungeons only. That's arena 
and then we have a defense debuff. So it's either defense or accuracy. And I'll be honest, I probably would take the accuracy here. So, you know, we, we're down even further. So we're going to take that 410 that we require. We're going to multiply that by 0 0.8. That means we only need 328. And then we can also minus 80 off of that. So we're now down to 248 accuracy. So you can quite clearly see very quickly because of the fact she's mythical, she's going to get a powerful blessing here. We actually don't need an awful lot of accuracy stats. We can probably go much more like damage orientated into the build here. So if I'm building her out, I don't actually need to do the usual thing, which is like, okay, well, I probably need an accuracy banner. I can actually probably go, you know, for an attack banner if I wanted to, or make her tanky. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the A1, if I put a Shadowkin in my team, which is obviously Michinaki, and I counterattack with Lady Makage, it should initiate an, another counterattack with the Michinaki as well, right? So I'll counterattack with Makage. Makage's A1 requires a Shadowkin to join. So having a revenge accessory is actually quite valuable. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean I would sacrifice good pieces, which is what I've got here already. But even though, you know, this ring, I'm not going to take my Jintoro's ring because he's just so good for this. There are other rings here that we can compare this to this ring. This is going to be a little bit less. Let's just see what this is going to roll up to at maximum level here. So we can level this up here. It's a bit 265. So the difference between this piece and this piece is around about 80, about an 80 attack. But actually, it's probably worth it because if we get a, a revenge counterattack here, then we're going to be able to get Michinaki to attack, which will be overall more damage. So let's go with this one here. We might as well ascend it. You know, during CVC, we can do whatever we want. We can play the game. We can spend all our resources. We've got a HP. It's not ideal. We should swap, probably switch it at some point. Uh, we'll just throw in a five-star glyph here. That could be better than that. Let's just glyph it all up as well. So, you know, we're, we're going to try and push her build to the up, absolute extreme that we can. The biggest build possible on her so far. So I've chosen a full damage setup right now. Uh, we've got crit damage with crit damage here, attack, resistance, accuracy. We've also got a triple speed attack with an accuracy here. So already, just with these bottom substat rows, I'm up to 216. Put in my area bonuses, I'm at 232. And remember, all I needed to make this work was 420 times 0 0.8, which is 20% off, 328 minus the 80. I only needed 248. I don't need any more accuracy in my build after I put a few masteries on. I just don't need any more accuracy. So it's, it's really good. And so I think the best set for her as well is Relentless. You really wanna cycle back around to this A3 as long as you can. It is a four turn cooldown. And this is also a three turn cooldown. So the longer you can extend the duration of debuffs, the longer you can extend the duration of sort of buffs and various different things. And also the more you can get A1s in, especially in the team that I'm using where I'm using Michinaki as my main HP burn champion, it's really gonna help. Um, the big thing I have to do here is I need to farm some dust because I put it through the optimizer using the new custom ascension tool where you can essentially pick the, the specific ascensions you want. And it's basically telling me this needs to be crit damage, this needs to be attack percentage, and this needs to be speed. When those things are put together, it's gonna give me a lot more. Right now I'm sitting on around about 272 speed. If we put into Hydra, 280 speed. 12 speed, big difference. 20% crit damage, big difference. I've gone full nuke build. Now I might have to bring it back a little bit if she just can't survive. We might have to like switch out the attack percentage chest for a HP percentage chest if we find that she is too squishy. Um, I just want to go absolute health to leather, full damage. We can absolutely glyph these up here as well. We can invest some more into our Mikage. It's already cost us about 8 million just to build one champion. This is the price of mythical champions, unfortunately. Wow, look at that, 1%, and then it will do 2%. Can we get even higher? 3%, 4%, we'll settle on that one there. Uh, we can ascend it. Is it gonna give us attack? That's what we really want. Got HP, so that's another dust item. So the only downside is a lot of dust farming here, for example, again, oh, we're out of oil. We can't even ascend that one. Uh, we've got six accuracy, and we've got that. We can give it a little bit of a glyph for HP. So we're really kind of pushing the boundaries for damage. That's really what I want to do here. I want to make sure that I'm pushing as much damage as possible into the builds. So right now at level one, we have got her at 2,925 attack. This is obviously going to scale when we get some points. 275 speed, 95% crit rate. Why? Because we're going to put the crit rate mastery on her. And she's already at 249 accuracy. I don't need any more than this. So now we need to do the mastery farming. You can see I've already done the artifact enhancement there, which is really nice, basically doing all that. Champion training wise, that is just 
catapulted me all the way up. Ascending the champion, booking the champion a little bit, that's basically given me 2,000 points. So it's a really good time to do it. I'm not going for this win here. It's crazy, people. I'm definitely going for the Lunar Points, and I'll probably try and sneak the Legendary book at the same time. Now, Mastery-wise, this is my current plan for the Mastery Tree. You basically have two choices. You can go down the support tree if you really want to, grab Lasting Gifts, which is the Tier 5 milestone, and try to extend the duration of the A3 buffs. It is a four-turn cooldown with two-turn buffs, so you do have a two-turn, like a 50% downtime. That will get mitigated by the fact her A2 will extend those duration of those buffs. But keep in mind, that is a bit of a problem, especially if she's going much slower than anyone else in the team. I've got to go in a lot faster, so I plan on her having her probably cycle back to those buffs before too long. You can also take advantage of like things like Laura Steel, Cycle of Magic, and get some accuracy bonuses. Maybe you want to get some turn meter when your buffs fall off. Or the other option is you can try and further index into her A1 plan, which is use the Shadowkin counterattack to A1 more often. That's kind of like what I've wanted to go to. I'm going to go down the defense tree here, and I'm going to take Deterrence and Retribution. Now, you might, a lot of people might be thinking Deterrence is terrible because of the, um, the the Torment Head. You don't really want to take that. I'm not really too fussed. I want to take as many counterattacks as I can because if I counterattack, then my Shadowkin Champion is also going to join the attack at the same time. And that is what I really want to do. So I'm going to farm these Masteries. Uh, we're going to build up Mikage. And then part two of this video is going to be looking at this Hydra team. This is the team we're going to be looking at. How can we maximize it? It has got pretty much everything that we could ever want in a Hydra team. We have got Provoke, Hex, and Decrease Speed from the Nergagante Archer. We've got Decrease Defense, Weaken, Block Buffs on a single target if we need it from the Lydia, the, the, the Death Siren here. We've got Burn from Michinaki as well as Decrease Attack and another Decrease Defense and another Hex. We also have full buff removal with Michinaki at the same time. Michinaki will then pair with Mikage to try and make those burns in AoE essentially. We've got Rathalos for pure damage and nukage. We know he can hit really hard. And then Elytrion is going to come in here and basically be our debuff cleanser, our block debuffs, our increased defense, our shield, and another buff extender. So he's really there to stabilize the team. And this is kind of like the team we're going to go to. There's a very good chance we might have to make Mikage a little bit tankier um, in this setup to keep them alive. But we are going to get an awful lot of defensive protection from this uh, Alatrian, right? He's going to give us a very big shield at 30%. He's also going to give us increased defense, and we're also going to have a full cleanse and block debuffs up fully when we have it booked. So it means that we can extend these buffs. Now, a few people have asked me, you know, are you sure you can extend protected buffs? Let's just put it to the test just to make sure. Uh, we're going to bring this team in here. We're going to do this. And we're going to go here. Hopefully, the team will not die at all these levels because we have not built these champions yet. But you can see we can start off here. We're not ever going to transform. We're not going to do that. We're just going to always stick to this. Now, I could open with this ability or I could open with the A1 so that we get a burnout. The big thing to keep in mind here is I don't have any block buffs on an AoE setting. So I do need to make sure that I pick on a specific head and prioritize that. So we probably need to kill this head here. Otherwise, we are going to be in trouble. Now, obviously, this is easy, so it's not so much of an issue. No Gigante Arch is going to come in here. She has weak affinity against the Provoke head. So, you know, this is where you go. Free regroup. Do it again. You don't normally have a problem. It's really not bad. I mean, I think we've changed affinity. Like, um, I think we've changed rotation. So, potentially, it could be a problem going forward. But normally, it's okay. We can prioritize it. And the idea with this team is we would kill it very quickly. We've got an extra turn there, so we could try and go again. Get Brimstone out. There's that Michinaki counterattack, which is going to be really good. We weak hit again. Can we Can we not weak hit? No Gigante Archer, please. This could be a problem, this this rotation, if this is now going to be the, the thing. Is is the Archer actually going to be able to keep the Provoke up if she's weak hitting? Um, you'd like to think she could. There we go. There's that Provoke out. She's going to get an extra turn now. So there goes the decrease speed. We boost all of our turn meter and set it all up. But here's the thing. I should have probably A2'd, but we can probably come in here and do a bit of damage. And hopefully we can get a burn out on this head. Now we're okay because the burn is out. As long as the burn is out, we're probably fine. And we can, this is where the value is now. We can extend all of the duration of all the buffs, all the duration of all the debuffs. Massive amounts of utility. The mischief tank in this team is going to be the Nergagante Archer when it's set up fully. But now we can see the value of these protected buffs here. We can basically come in and we can put this extended debuff on that attack. He's not got any gear right now, so uh, we're, we're just kind of using him for a test here to see if we can extend it. I probably should have waited on the buff extension, but it's only a three turn cooldown, so we'll get it back pretty quickly. And we can start doing some damage here. Uh, so again, we can A1, 
permanent counterattack. So we're hoping, I'm basically hoping that the, the burns will be sufficient with just the Mikage A1. Uh, and also Michinaki's passive, which we know is pretty good. Oh, interestingly, the counterattack there didn't trigger Michinaki's counterattack. Maybe that doesn't work. This is those situations where you assume it should work, but maybe it's never intended to work. We'll double check that again, because maybe it was just a one-off, but um, it may not be the case. Let's see, A1. So it definitely works when we when we control the A1. Does it work when the enemy controls the, contr the counterattack? Let's see. So we can test this now. Does it extend protected buffs? The answer is yes, it does. The three turns gone up. So absolutely fine for protected buffs there. Now the only thing we just need to make sure definitely works is if the counterattack triggers the joint attack from the A1. Perhaps it doesn't. We'll read the skill description. Maybe I was just a bit tired and I didn't read the skill description properly. We will see. But the big thing that Mikage enables us to use here is we can now actively use Wrath of Losses A3 because everyone should have increased crit crit damage right when we use this ability here we can actually attack ahead everyone has got increased crit damage so it doesn't mean that he will get targeted like before it should always go on Nergigante Archer once we get this set up and we get the buff extension rolling so we're actually killing the heads too quickly here so I can't really test it but this is kind of the concept I've got for the team it's obviously on normal so it's just a testing because the champions are not built right now but you can see that the team has pretty much everything it needs to do damage uh, we've already seen like a pretty chunky 3.5 million on uh, on a Rathalos build. And the buff, the, this counterattack really allows us to fully maximize a merciless Rathalos because we can use that A3. There's that extra turn into a buff extension. And the, the plan is hopefully with the buff extension. There we go. There was the counterattack. So no, it doesn't. So that makes me reconsider my mastery tree setup that I just talked about and also the revenge is not that valuable because if the, if you can't counterattack to trigger the joint attack, that's actually quite poor. So this is actually what I would suggest you do with masteries. So I would change the tree so it's m far more support focused, basically so much more fo support focused because the counterattack is of little value. So actually what we want is to get back around to that A3 and A2 more often. So we're gonna take lasting gifts to extend the buff duration to begin with. Then we're also gonna take a uh, cycle of magic so that we can try and reset or reduce the cooldown of the A3 and the A2 by one. Laura Steel because we'll get some bonus stats if we've got like a cruel set with us. It'll give us a little bit more attack percentage. And then we're also gonna take rapid response so that we get 30% of our 30 chance to get some turn meter back as well. So you're just cycling it more often. So that's the tree we're going to take now instead, now that we've discovered that. This is one of those things that I should probably play test before I said that it's that's how it's going to work. But, you know, I haven't... I've not actually seen any content on Mikaga. I'm going in completely blind. My plan is to use her in Hydra and Finite Heart. That's the main areas. Uh, we can end this run that I was doing on the other screen here now. Uh, let's just see kind of like... The rough idea, um, you can see like Nogagante Archer and Blade Master are going to be the primary damage dealers, but Michinaki will help out as well. Blade Master is going to just support the team, extend the buffs, uh, but Mikage should produce a decent amount of damage as well with her kit when she's fully scaled out. We've got Brimstone in there as a single target as well on a four turn, so that'll help um, be beat it. What we probably need to do here is take some of these Brimstones away and bring in some Cruelty options. Cruelty is not very good for Mikage because she doesn't really AoE enough. You need more than one AoE. So something like a Michinaki in Cruelty is probably a better idea than Brimstone. The other plan that I have is, of course, Fire Knight Hard. This is now time to finally build a proper Fire Knight 10 Hard team. Uh, I've got my hands on Neldor. Neldor will absolutely be going into this team. He's, I think, probably the best epic Fire Knight Hard champion, better than Creedon and better than... Um, the Gory, I think he is better than those. Uh, Razzlevarg is a placeholder. I think this could be done by a Genzin, a Razzlevarg, or I think Xenogre Blademaster. That's the champion I'm planning on using here first is the Xenogre Blademaster. I'll have a five-star soul. And when you have a five-star soul phantom touch paired with a, a quadra hit, like four hits, you're almost guaranteed to get a phantom touch proc every single time you attack with it. So it means that I can take five stacks off the shield before we even get started. Every time we freeze, even though the shield is up, Neldor will counterattack with this ability whilst the shield is up because the boss will block the freeze with the shield, but the freeze is still placed. So you can actually sometimes get lucky and get a counterattack here with that as well. Mikage would be the ally attack, naturally. If we wanted to, we can use her second form for the wave control and then switch her back when we get to the boss um, so that she can go straight into that counterattack ability here. 
We're going to get increased attack and increased crit damage, which should help us kill the boss down. The last spot is really flexible. I haven't quite decided. Do I bring another freeze champion like a Creedon or a Gory? Or do I bring another ally attacker like a, a long bid? One thing we don't have right now is a decreased defense. So Farrakhan the Fat is kind of desirable. We would absolutely want a decreased defense option here. But I don't really think there is a decreased defense with a freeze champion. Blizzard is another option we could use. Um, we've got... Alexander, but I think he's, I don't think he's going to work if I'm being honest, because I think he uh, requires the factions. So realistically, there is no one that can do decreased defense and freeze. So we would probably have to go for a decreased defense option, which could be Farrak in the fat, would absolutely help manage the freeze better if we've only got two freeze champions, which is all we would go for. Or we could, or we could just ignore the decreased defense, try and stack it down with cruelty, try and stack it down with area bonuses and savage lethal and try and just ignore the defense that way. But that is my plan for this team. So this video is kind of like, I wanted to kind of go through the process of building out the way that I'm approaching building the champion. The next video with this is probably going to be the built Mikage going in and showing these two teams. It might even be two separate videos for each team so that we can break it down into detail. Um, I'm conscious that I've already talked for about 25 minutes in this video and I haven't really built a team and showcased it other than testing the champion. But what is very good about this is I'm now at 467,000 clan versus clan points. When I started this, I was at 350,000. So the value of just ascending and upgrading and booking and getting the champion, it's incredibly high value for getting a Mikage during a clan versus clan. The, um, the points you get from Mythical Champions and Clan versus Clan is very, very high. There you go, guys. Mikage is acquired, my first Mythical Champion. Um, let me know in the comments below how you are using your Mikage. Did I make any mistakes or misunderstanding? I've already done one in this video and I've corrected myself in the video. I'm sure some people haven't reached the end and probably will say you're wrong about this before they've even watched the end. So um, obviously I will now have to go and remove that revenge ring because it's not as valuable um, at all. And we don't really want the brimstone going on to different targets in Hydra. So we will probably look for a more aggressive ring or perhaps look at maybe pairing it with like a supersonic could be an option. Probably not. Uh, I don't really have. I can technically go nine out of nine supersonic in Shadowkin, which is probably better for Lady Kimmy, if I'm being honest. But that being said, let me know in the comments below, how are you using Lady Mikage? How are you finding her? Is there anything I should be particularly testing or you want me to test with Lady Mikage? So far, I don't really think there's much value in her other sort of form for me in just general areas like in Hydra and Finite. I can see this being useful for the waves in Finite, but definitely not at the boss. So I'm not really concerned about booking these abilities um, at all, essentially. Um, so we'll see what happens. But there you go, guys. Lady Mikage, super excited. It's taken me about three weeks to finally get her. Let's see what kind of craziness we can get up to in Hydra and Finite. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.